Hello everybody and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 5. In this tutorial we are going to focus on creating a keyboard class and how we can read our keyboard messages from our engine. The first thing we're going to do is go to your engine class and we are going to add a function called update. Now update is just going to be processing all of the messages that we get in from our keyboard class. Let's go ahead and create the definition. All right, and we're just going to leave that blank for right now. For a keyboard class, we're going to have a keyboard class and then a keyboard event class. Let's see, let's first create a new filter. We're going to call this filter keyboard. And we're going to do that for the header and the source files, just to try to organize this. Now first, let's create our keyboard Let's see, new item, our keyboard event header. Now we are going to have a few different event types. We're going to have if the user is pressing a key, if the user is releasing a key, and if the event is invalid. Our constructors are pretty basic. The first one will just generate an invalid event, and the second one uh, takes in the event type and then the key. Is press will just return true if this is a press event. Is release will return true if it's a release event, and is valid will return true if it is a press or a release. Get key code will just return whatever the key code is, and then we are storing the event type and the key. So the keyboard event class is very basic. Let's go ahead and create the definitions for these functions. So we are going to create a CPP file. Going to call it keyboard event. All right, and we just have our first constructor with no arguments where it generates an invalid event. Our constructor that takes the type and the key. Where we are returning if it is a press, if it is a release, if it is valid, and get key code. So now let's go on to the keyboard class, which is a bit more involved. So we are going to add a new item, call it our keyboard class header. And the first thing we will want to do is include our keyboard event header, and we will want to include Q. So So our keyboard class, it's going to have a queue of keyboard events and a queue of chars. So as you see here, we have a queue of our keyboard events, we're going to call it key buffer, and then a queue of chars, we're going to call it char buffer. So if the user presses down A and releases it, they're going to receive a, a keyboard event for the press they're going to receive the uh, char just for hitting a character and then they're going to receive a keyboard event for the release and if we are processing auto repeats then they will receive all of the presses in between if we are not processing auto repeats then they will not The key states, we are going to have a function uh, to check if the key is pressed, so we will have an array of all of the key states where we are storing them. And then auto repeat keys and chars is just whether or not we are accepting auto repeats. Now for the functions, there's a bit more to this. We have our constructor, uh, we have where we are checking if a key is pressed and we can pass in the key code. We have if we are checking if the key buffer and char buffer are empty and we're, we can read a key or a char. Now, in our loop, we're going to be checking if the key and char buffer are empty, and if they're not, then we are going to be reading keys or chars and then processing them. Down here, for on key pressed, on released, and on char, this is how we will be adding keys or chars to our queues from the window proc. 
And then the rest here is just if we want to enable or disable auto repeat for keys or chars. And then if we are checking if keys or chars are set to auto repeat. So let's go ahead and create the CPP. Alright, scroll to the top. Okay, so for our constructor, we are just initializing the key states to false, which is used by our key is press function. Key is press, we just return uh, the position in the array at the key code to see whether it's pressed or not. True is pressed, false is not pressed. Um, if the key buffer is empty, we just return the empty function from the queue. Char buffer, same idea. When we are reading a key, we, we should only be reading a key if there are uh, keyboard events in the buffer. But if for some reason they call it and there are no keyboard events, then we are just going to return that invalid keyboard event, which is just the default constructor. Otherwise, we are going to get the keyboard event from the front of the queue. We are going to remove it from the queue by popping it and then return that keyboard event. Rechar works the same way, except we are doing it with chars, and we are returning null char if there are no chars. On key pressed uh, is just going to push a new keyboard event into that queue, just put it at the end of it. On key release is the same idea, but we're pushing the release event type instead of press. On char does the same thing, but for the char queue. And then enable and disable auto repeat keys, sets them to true and false. It's pretty uh, obvious what it does just from the code names. And then is keys auto repeat and is chars auto repeat? These will actually be called by our window proc to determine if it should be routing uh, certain events. So let's go to our window proc, which is stored now in our uh, window container CPP. And let's add a switch case. So the default will be to return the default window proc. And first let's take care of reading chars. Having some trouble here. Oh my gosh, okay, there we go. Now for reading chars, we know that we can get the char by looking at the W param. Now if uh, we are accepting auto repeat keys. Oh, I haven't added the keyboard to our window container. So let's go to the window container. We are going to add or include. And before we do that, let's actually create a folder for our keyboard source files. So go up to where it says show all files. And we are going to add a new folder call it keyboard and we are going to drag these source files into there all right once that's done we can uncheck show all files and get back to the previous view all right and if we go back to our window container let's include the keyboard class header we're going to add a member for our keyboard now let's go to the window proc and what we can do is we can check if auto repeat chars is on with is chars auto repeat and if they are then we can just go ahead and call the on char and pass in that message otherwise if we are not accepting auto repeat cars we need to find a way to determine if this is an auto repeat character now if we look at the documentation for Windows Message Char, we will see that the bit in slot 30, so the 31st bit, um, will store the previous key state. So if the value is 1, the key is down, and it will be 0 if the key is up. So if we pull up our calculator, we can find that if we put in a 1 and then 30 zeros to get to uh, the slot we were looking for. Alright, we convert that to a hex. 
if we and um, our w param with this value, it should tell us if that key was pressed or not. So we're going to say equals uh, l param. We're going to end it. And if it was not pressed, then we are going to dispatch it because we know that it was not an auto repeat key. All right, so we want to test this. So let's go back to our engine CPP. And in our update, we are going to put in a loop. We're going to say while the char buffer is not empty, then let's get a char from it. And we are going to output the char in our debug string. All right, and after we've set up that string and to output it, we just need to call update from our main loop in our source CPP. So inside of here, we're just going to call engine.update and let's test this. Now we should only see one message per character press. So if I hold, if I press A and I hold it down, you see in our output, we got A and I just released it. That's because auto repeat is turned uh, to, is set to false by default. However, if we go into our engine constructor, we can do keyboard dot enable auto repeat chars. And then if we run this again, and if I hold down A, you'll see I get a whole bunch of messages. We don't want auto repeat, or at least I don't, so I'm going to take that line out. Now next we have to process the key presses and key releases. So let's go back to our window container CPP. We're going to add the key down and the key up messages. Now we can get the key the same way with all of these. And with key up, we don't have to worry about auto repeats because that won't happen. So we're just going to call keyboard on key released and pass in that character, or rather key code, I guess. I should probably change. I know it is technically a char, but these are the key codes. And then for key down, we do have to worry about auto repeats. So let's check, is keys auto repeat? And if they are, then we are going to just pass that in on the, on the key pressed. Otherwise, we need to check if this is an auto repeat. So we're just going to copy and paste what we had and if it is not an auto repeat, we will call on key pressed and pass in the key code. Now the last thing we need to do is go back to our engine CPP and update this update function. We're going to do while key buffer is not empty, key code read key. Oh get key code. So, I mean, I guess we could do this. Event equals keyboard.readKey. Call it KBE. And then we could get the key code by calling KBE.getKeyCode. We do key code. And then print it out. So if we test this, you see if we press A, we get uh, where I had pressed it, and then the char, and then where it had released. So if we want to see, I guess, let's see, we can initialize that to blank, and we could say if is press, we could do key press. And if it is release, 
we could do key release. Now when we test this, if I press down A, you see we get the key press, and then we get the char, and then we get the key release. And if I press, let's say, left arrow key, we get, it just so happens to show up as a percentage, but we would get back the key code for the left arrow key. All right, so that is how we handle keyboard input. I'm going to take out all of the testing code and just leave in the new stuff that we added. So yeah, that is all that we are going to cover in this tutorial. In the next tutorial, we will probably get into uh, handling mouse input. And the one after that, we'll get into raw mouse input. And then finally, we'll get into initializing DirectX.